welcome in Salt Lake City. Um, as you can clearly understand, uh, I'm Italian, but actually I moved in Utah exactly last year, uh, and I lived with my family uh, halfway from this convention center and the headquarters from uh, Salt Stack. So, um, Dogmods is a salt addicted company. We used to um, we use salt stack basically in every part of our infrastructure. So that's uh, that's why the funny uh, subject salt stack RD. So this uh, presentation, which includes a part of demo, uh, we took around 35, 40 minutes. Uh, at the end of uh, the presentation, I'll, uh, of course, we will have some space for question and answer. But if you have uh, any question, just interrupt me and we can go over that question. Uh, I will go through a presentation of myself and what Domots is so that I can uh, bring you on why we really need source tech in our infrastructure. So we will go through how Domots work. Um, and we see why we implemented source tech in our infrastructure from uh, the local um, development physical machine down to the cloud, or up to the cloud, virtual machine. Uh, we will see the benefit for our company or for our infrastructure of, uh, in using the source stack um, from running and starting new VPC on AWS into configuring servers with their, uh, with their services. We'll go through uh, a quick overview of our production environment and how we use Thomas there. And then we will drive into the core of this presentation. So why we choose to, um, to use SourceTech also to control and deploy our fleet of our IoT devices that we use um, in, in our solution. So we will see the problem that we had to solve at that time of, each of, uh, of the decision and the benefits that that, that choice brought us to uh, today. So um, my name is Giancarlo Fanelli, and I'm currently the technology uh, lead or guide in Domots. Uh, I started actually my, my professional career as a system administrator um, in an operational team in a, a telco company back in uh, Italy. It was uh, 2000, 2001. Then I moved in Greece with the same role. So I was a system administrator taking care of the production environment of this telco huge company. Uh, at that time, uh, the, at that time, the automatism that we have, we are used to, to have today was a, an utopia. So I spent most of my development time in, uh, in doing, in, in bringing automatism to what it was at that time, really a manual process. Uh, after that period, uh, I, I jumped into a different, comp a completely different role. Uh, I was more attracted by investment banking. So I, I went into an IT company in investment banking uh, sector. Uh, and at that time I was doing, taking care of the architecture of those um, uh, investment bank or trading platforms. Um, by then I, I jumped into a, a business consulting role. So I worked for Gartner for, for a few months, a uh, year. Uh, and at that time I, I met with one of my former colleagues, Silvio, and one of my former um, customer, Domenico is his name, he was a, a head of trading desk in, in, in one of the investment bank I was working with. And he had this uh, huge problem. So he had, at that time, it was uh, um, exactly four years ago, so September 2014, he had two uh, houses very well filled uh, with uh, IP connected devices, so between 100 and 150 IP connected devices in each house. And as you can imagine, those houses were having huge, huge problem with networking. So for instance, they, he was switching on the Wi-Fi mesh network with Sonos, and his kids could not connect to the Wi-Fi with, his, with their mobile, or uh, just switching on uh, an amplifier in one room, switched off the, the, the uh, video distribution in another room. So all this kind of stuff. So he thought, I need a system administrator, like the ones that I have in my bank, taking care of my houses. But as you can imagine, this kind of problem will increase in the near future, or 
it started to increase already. And, but the system administrator or the engineer um, um, is not increasing with the same uh, growth. So I thought, oh, we need a tool to simplify this kind of problem. And I spoke this, uh, with this colleague, which was uh, the IT part in the, in the bank, Silvio, and I said, oh, we need to, to build a, a software like that. It's a software like Nagios, a software like uh, Zabbix, uh, but which will help him to resolve his, problem, his personal problem at all. So at that time, investigated uh, any possible solution like uh, what we built, and there were none. So we, he came involved with me, and uh, I jumped from the, the business consultant's role into this really uh, te technology role, starting from scratch, uh, doing the first line of code of Domus. What is Domus? It's basically a remote network and monitoring solution. It has been uh, built from scratch with the idea of providing a simply uh, to a simple a very simple tool to audio video installer or technology guy that didn't have very, very good understanding of networking to provide them this kind of tool to do more monitoring and then troubleshooting of issues that happens in the home in the exact same way Dominic had in his own home. So we, we enter in this uh, audio video home automation market uh, very early, but soon after we jumped in, in a much larger uh, market which is the security space. So through Domots, uh, uh, at the moment, you can remotely monitor um, networks and devices, so the status of devices, but you can also troubleshoot issues, like you can uh, um, well, troubleshoot and resolve some issues. You can reboot devices through the mean of a power distribution unit or PoE ports from switches. Uh, you can jump into the configuration page of devices and change configuration if there's something uh, is related with the configuration. But also, we can create a secure channel with, uh, what, um, with security camera. So you, you're familiar with uh, IP security camera and what they used to do in the past. They were recommending the end user to port forwarding, uh, port outside to have uh, remote access to the security camera. Very bad practice from security point of view. So we, use, we leveraged our remote channel, what we created for remote channel, to enter in this uh, physical security space. So the installer of security camera, access control, and so on. Um, and soon after, we jumped also in the MSP space, so managed service provider, because there are uh, hundreds of thousands of IT managers. They manage um, networks for small company, usually. So imagine a um, chain of restaurants or chain of uh, casinos. They don't have their own uh, IT management um, uh, team internal to the company, so they rely on external MSP. And the way they were managing those networks were usually uh, from remote, were usually, in the best case scenario, was through a VPN, which doesn't scale, which doesn't help them to uh, secure one network when somebody from their company leaves the network, because they need to, consider, to delete all the credential there. So this is w why we were entering this market very easily. Also because, let me say, the, the solution we offer is simple to install. It requires 15 minutes to scan the network and, and configure all the things that we ne they need for a network like uh, in the average of 50, 60 devices. And it's extremely cheap. <laughs> and my, my colleagues say it's stupid cheap. It costs $3 per month uh, on, uh, on an entire network, regardless of the number of, uh, of devices. So how it works and why salt stack is important there. So it, the, we need the tool that scans the local network. Uh, are you familiar with Fing, F-I-N-G, which is an app very famous, like it has 35 million downloads. It's a, an app that scans the local network, gives you the IP uh, of every single device and the MAC address, so it recognizes devices. So we own this technology, Fing, and uh, we put Fing, this scanning tool, into an agent, what we call an agent, to scan the local network, report the, the information up into the cloud, and then use this information from a mobile phone, from a web app, and you can configure alerts to receive uh, a message whenever a device goes down or doesn't work properly. Uh, it scales a lot. This kind of agent can be installed on a Windows machine, it can be installed on, uh, on a NAS drive, it can be installed on a Raspberry, and it can be, we, we can provide this IoT device that we deliver. Uh, so it needs to scale. We, need, uh, we, we have uh, tens of thousands of agents installed, so our cloud is massive uh, at the moment uh, with, with uh, four main data centers, around uh, 12 uh, different a AWC, um, a AWS uh, VPC, and hundreds of virtual machines there. 
So uh, it is important to understand that when we started in 2015 with the first line of code, we are a very small team. But the time, of, uh, the time to market was important. So we had to develop something very quick, something that it was easy to upgrade uh, and, uh, and also something easy to scale. So we, we required to have uh, a, a control system or, or a, 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 an important part of our architecture was the automatism. So since the first day, we chose to have uh, uh, a, a control management system. We chose a uh, source step. Scalability, of course, was, uh, was uh, our first reason. So control at scale is our mantra. So uh, among the five abilities available with source, definitely scalability is first, but also the extensibility. So we had to, uh, we required to have uh, a tool which can be used and expanded with the time. So through the mean of modules, through the mean of grains, through the mean of uh, uh, pillar data and the states that should aggregate the, 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 mm, the configuration for all the environments that we have. Predictability, adaptability, and heterogeneity. And I will, I will, <laughs> I will tell you later why it was very important for us in the, in the, in the future. Uh, so, of course, the, the performance was the main, uh, the, one of the, the key factors in the decision there, but also the ease of use. It was very easy compared to other uh, tools like Chef, Puppet, whatever, uh, and it allows us to scale on a massive number of, uh, of uh, minions, or say slave for, for, for the for source. So at that time, when we did the due diligence and cooperation between the tool, it was good for a small up to a huge uh, platform. So where we start uh, implementing source? We started from, uh, from, from the bottom. We start from the development environment. So everybody in our company, every application developer has his own uh, machine where he wants to perform his own test. So he wants to uh, make modification to the code and perform his own test. But this machine should be configured in the same way or similar to what it will be production next day. So uh, most of the, 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 um, let's say the guidelines that we had there at that time was okay, we need to, to build every single machine the same way. And this single machine should be fast to be deployed, very similar to the test environment then to production environment. And it should be, um, and every single uh, application developer should be autonomous in choosing the new technology and change its, all, all its own machine in, the, in a very fast way. So we choose to, to have uh, a solution based on Vagrant and Source. So basically, with Vagrant, we inject a series of grains into the local machine, local uh, virtual machine, and we then execute a source call. So it's, uh, uh, within the same machine, we have source master and source minion. We execute a source call with the ISD, and we can create the entire uh, solution that we deploy also in the cloud in less than 30 minutes on a single machine. Of course, our uh, application developer, they, they deploy once and then they keep upgraded in, in a very few minutes or they just deploy part of that application dep depending on what they really need at that time. So the developer environment, we say, is the, the, the starting point. But as, we, as I mentioned, we want them to scale from development environment then to testing environment, staging environment, production, with the same list of states. One of the requirements from the infrastructure team was to have uh, states, every single state that developer are allowed to write and to change to be tested automatically. So there is a, a Jenkins session that not only tests the application, but also tests the infrastructure and tests the states that uh, our developers and DevOps team write. So the states are the same, and regardless the, the, the environment, regardless the multiple BPC that we create on AWS. Of course, the grains are different, machine by machine, and the pillars are generated automatically starting from the grain. So pillars are parametric starting from the grain. Pillar generated for development environment, of course, will be different from the one in production. But everything is, uh, um, everything is parameter, and this is why using a source stack also, also was uh, a, a good choice because we know source, uh, source stack works very well with Jinja. We were very uh, familiar at that time with Jinja and the, 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 what it could bring to us in terms of uh, scalability, 
in terms of replicability, so a way to replicate the same environment multiple times, perform a, ch a very quick change to the production environment to create a white label version of the production environment for uh, our big customers. So all these kind of uh, uh, drivers were took into consideration when we chose Solstice. And it was um, uh, a, a very, uh, a very nice benefit what we had when we chose Sotsec and we will see later why. So let's see how we start from, from the local machine. We uh, use Sotsec also to create infrastructure on the cloud. So through the mean of uh, Salt Cloud and the Bottle Tree, I don't know how many of you are familiar with those tools. So we are uh, able to create an entire virtual private network from scratch. So not only the, uh, the, um, the servers that we can start and configure as we are familiar with SoulStack, but the entire networking. So security groups in, uh, in, um, in AWS, nothing configuration, um, front-end, back-end, uh, separation between subnets, um, RDS, remote uh, uh, databases in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in uh, AWS, all these pieces of the infrastructure in nodes are created through source. Starting from, as I said, the, VP, the, the virtual private network uh, in, 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 into AWS. And through a single, uh, a, a, a single um, console, we control all the servers there and all the infrastructure. So, um, as I said, the, the, the initial requirement was that the states should be the same for the different environment, from local virtual machine to the production, because we need to test the state. And the aim, our, our aim, is that we will uh, fully automate the entire deployment process into production. So, starting from development, uh, down to testing, automation, automating testing, if the test pass, the, our aim is to have uh, the, the, the continuous, what we call the continuous deployment. So uh, automatically passing the test means that it will go into production automatically. And this is, uh, as I said, it, it is feasible. It's, we are not still there, but it is, it is feasible with all the ingredients that we have there, starting from the, the fact that we can create an entire AWS structure with, uh, with salt. So this is just an example of uh, some screenshot of, uh, of our architecture in, uh, in uh, production, in, in our production environment. So basically, at the time we started with uh, our cloud infrastructure, we decided that we had to have two main data centers. One uh, in, uh, in, North, in North America, in US, take care of all the North American uh, US users, and uh, one in Europe, take care of all the rest of the world of the uh, users. And this was, uh, a tough decision from my point of view, but last year it was a very, it resulted to be a very, very um, good decision when GDPR went in place. And you are familiar with the GDPR, and you are familiar with the, the rules that we have in Europe to keep uh, data segregated, segregated there, encrypted, and in the local storage in Europe, not in the US. So it was good to choose that one, but of course it, cre it increased the, the the complexity of our infrastructure. Having two data centers, um, but with users connecting from all, all over the world, we couldn't allow users to connect to one data center or the other based on their location, because one user from the US needs to connect to the European, what we call cell, to uh, have a visibility of the network he managed in Europe. So there would be like, uh, there is actually a, uh, a pivot um, what we call a pivot P VPC in AWS, which basically route users across Europe and US. <laughs> All these basically create a lot of more complexity. Starting from that one, we have created other cell to manage white labeling uh, solution. And starting from that one, we have created other VPC to manage uh, remote connectivity uh, with a proximity, proximity uh, rule. So for instance, we have um, the main data center are in, uh, in uh, Dublin and in North Virginia. But we have data centers in, uh, down to Asia, uh, uh, in Australia, down up to 
to the West Coast here. And those are mainly used for remote connectivity. So imagine you establish a remote connectivity and you pass through our tunnel. We need to keep the tunnel as, as close as possible uh, to, the, to the agent, so the software that scans the network, the network itself. So we have uh, this kind, what we call tentacle, around the world. And there are eight different uh, tentacles there. So <laughs> it, it, it again increased the complexity there. And thanks, thanks to all the game, we were able to manage all this complexity from one single place with some simple rules. Um, I want to jump into a live demo, but probably it's easier to just go through some of the commands that we, we usually execute, or our infrastructure team usually execute when, uh, um, when, when they need to manage, for example, a new cell, a new VPC. So the, they usually use a local server in their team, which connects to AWS in a secret way, and by the configuration of local grains, they can instruct salt cloud okay, to create a new VPC, a new routing table, a new nothing, or a new database, and then launch the machine there, the virtual machine, and configure the, the virtual machine with salt call, with salt call command. So the idea is that we use salt cloud and we build the infrastructure. But the, the thing is that how can we use Salt Cloud? Salt Cloud needs YAML file, YAML file to describe the architecture, the infrastructure. So we say we need something to create those YAML files in automatic way. And we use Salt to do the same. So we do perform on the local machine a Salt call based starting from the, the grains, it creates this YAML file for the, uh, to, to be injected in the salt, co in salt cloud, depending on the environment that we need to touch and depending on the part of the architecture that, that we need to touch. So basically, the first salt call here uh, creates the entire cell, the VPC. Then we configure, create the YAML file to do that. And then it executes the salt cloud through bottle sometimes to configure that in the uh, that infrastructure. Um, then we, we configure the security group. We do NAT, the, the NAT configuration. Or we change the routing table. We create RDS database, sorry. Um, and, and at the end of that, we create the map of the virtual machine that needs to be, to be um, rolled out. And the last, the last execution is basically the salt cloud to run the virtual machine. So, uh, start up the virtual machine and execute the high state of any single virtual machine. So every single virtual machine which will be injected with the, its own uh, grains, and based on the grains, starting from the grains, the virtual machine will be configured in a, in a proper way with the service that they, that specific virtual machine needs to offer. Another example is that how we change uh, the security group, or, or what security group is basically the firewall sort of in AWS. So if we, uh, the infrastructure team receive a, a requirement to change a specific uh, uh, firewall around our cloud infrastructure, what they need to do is just changing the generic file, which is the input file to generate the YAML file for salt cloud. And uh, uh, g g changing that file, generate a new YAML file for the environment that you need to touch, testing environment, staging environment, production environment. And then by the executing of the security, uh, uh, the security group state, we generate that YAML specific for the environment and the salt cloud for that environment. In this case, it was both or three, I think. Uh, same thing for starting a new machine. So every single uh, virtual machine brings their, uh, let's say, uh, default services that are required for our application. But of course, we have a certain number of virtual machine production environment, but much, much smaller in the testing environment. Not only for the scalability there, but also to concentrate some of the services on a smaller number of, uh, of um, uh, service in, servi servers in, uh, in, uh, in testing environment. So through the mean of uh, same concept, YAML file, we define the services that need to be bring in every single machine, and then we create the map, which is the input uh, to, the salt, uh, to the salt cloud uh, uh, commands. 
Okay, this brings me, sorry, I'm probably a little bit late, uh, brings me to, the, to our main decision that we had to do uh, two, three years ago. So we started, just to recap, we started in January 2015 with the first line of codes. And uh, we, were, we were happy to have a live solution by uh, September 2015. So in, in September 2015, we were already on the cloud with the first version of the service available for beta testing to users that they, they didn't have the, uh, what we call the Domos box, which is a software scanning network. They had their own software that they could install, uh, sorry, our software that they could install in a Raspberry Pi, on a Linux machine, on a NAS, like Synology, Winamp, whatever, scan the network and rely on our cloud services to connect to the, those services. And the, in January uh, 2016, we were at CES in uh, Las Vegas. And <laughs> we met one guy, he was like Best Buy, with, uh, with the label Best Buy, we said, oh shit, we need to get him on board. We need to convince him that this is a tool that they can use for their Magnolia audio video uh, div division. And he was there at, at our, our, our booth and he, he said, oh stop, I don't need the demo. I am one of your better users. We said, oh, this is great. <laughs> and we were basically in March, that same year, we were in contract with Best Buy, Magnolia, to, the, to roll out the entire solution for, Mag for Magnolia Audio Video, which means thousands of houses monitored by, by their division. But they had a requirement. We don't want to install your software on our tool or on our hardware. You need to provide us with the hardware. <laughs> so it was January. Say, oh, we need to define hardware by September when there was another trade show uh, in Dallas, which, which is called CDI, it's in the other video space. And they want that solution by then. <laughs> so we struggled contacting uh, Taiwan companies to have an hardware. We were able to find the hardware. Issue was that we were not able to provide them with an image of the software, which was already production ready. And we had to be ready by, by July to, to, to have enough space until September. And we had to take in mind that we were, the, the plan was to scale up to more than 20,000 of these boxes around the world by the end of this year. <laughs> so there, were, there was a, we had to take a decision. Either we uh, create an image for these boxes uh, with our early version of the agent, or we simply put nothing in that box, we just put a script that does something as soon as it starts. And that's what we did. So basically, we uh, provide this Taiwan company with an image of, the, of, uh, of our operating system with nothing in there, just a script. Just a script that connects to our cloud, retrieve a list of steps that need to be performed, perform some configuration or setting up, so basically it's set up a salt menu inside the box, and it executes the high state against our salt master in the cloud. So January 2016, February, we were ready, uh, we were ready with an image, and uh, our Taiwan partner made that image available in July. So in July, we shipped the first boxes empty. And we had time between January and July to define the states in our cloud to what to bring into the box. So it was a, a very good decision. So the question is, did it work? Yes, it worked. And not only for that, it brings, it brought us other, other benefits, and we'll see later. Of course, the first month it was full, full of, uh, uh, let's say, troubleshooting activities, fixing issues to the, our states in the cloud, and, uh, and finding solution to bring new tools into the, that, uh, in that hardware, because we didn't talk about that in, in January. Um, but not only that, by the end of the same year, so it was July, uh, by December 2017, our partner, hardware manufacturer partner, didn't have any box to provide to us. So we had to choose uh, to change architecture. And thanks to Salt again, and uh, the, the possibility to have the same state regardless of the architecture, regardless of the operating system, we were able in, uh, in 2017, so last year, to ship new generation of the hardware with the, um, 
with this with basically the same state to configure the the, the box. We are also able to, uh, thanks to source, we are also able to do performing uh, uh, A/B testing of our cloud solution because we were able to push software updates only on some boxes and not on the others. So this was the roadmap. July 2016, first boxes. December 2016, we were out of <laughs> stock for those first mass production. And then in January, we changed architecture. And in December last year, again, we changed architecture. And thanks to Sol, we maintain the same states. So what we have realized as, uh, as benefits in, in doing that choice? Of course, automatic upgrades. So thanks to Salt, every single box keep automatically upgrades, upgraded from different tools that we can bring there. And the possibility to add tools on the go. The possibility to execute remote command to troubleshoot particular issue. So we do provide a remote monitoring and management solution for our customer. But our customers are not really, say, 100% expert of networking. They sometimes require our help or our partner help to investigate some networking issue in their customers. And so thanks to this channel, the, the provision channel through the salt, st salt stack, we're able to execute a remote command on the, on the boxes and bring their end map, bring their the, um, trace route, bring their other tools that we can use for troubleshooting. We have used in the past salt stack also to repurpose some of the Domox boxes. So some, once we had, we had the new architecture in place, some users decided to use the old box, which was provided with an HDMI uh, plug, to be a, a video streaming service. So we were able, through, through Salt, we were able to push there a streaming service. Few other things which have been enabled through, thanks to, to Salt Stack and the decision to bring Salt Stack in, uh, in that part of our architecture. Uh, again, this is, a huge, a massive uh, amount of uh, minions that are around. They are not the only ones that are used by, by, by Domus, because as I say, it, it is available to be downloaded also on your own, on your own hardware. But, but this is brings, on, on our boxes, brings a lot of uh, um, additional benefits. So for instance, in this case, we can upgrade a specific box with a newer version of our software. So the first, the first uh, uh, step we do Starting from the MAC address, which is the key to identify one of our IoT device, we identify the minion ID. And then once we get the minion ID, you can execute the simple state. In this case, it was an old state to, to bring a newer version of the agent. Basically, download the, the Debian package and, uh, and install the Debian package. We also rely on the, on the Debian repository, but this is for bringing newer version and just testing on a, on a, on a particular hardware. For, for instance, I have uh, an example last month, one of our customers in the UK, they, they were using a new, uh, new PDU, power distribution unit, which is the outlet that you can control the IP to reboot stuff, basically. Uh, we didn't have the driver to, to control that one. So we developed a new agent version. We deployed this new agent version only on his boxes around these uh, uh, hundreds of networks that he was monitoring. We test, massively test on those, uh, on those boxes, and then we brought in production that version of the agent. In the same way, we can apply patches to multiple uh, different boxes. So in, in, this, in this example, basically, we start from a list of MAC addresses. We retrieve the minion ID, also in this case, and we apply, we apply a specific patch. In this case, it was a patch B, BT605 with an asynchronous command. So we use massively salt, we use massively asynchronous command when we need to apply multiple patches to multiple IoT devices. So what's next? Uh, we really get engaged with salt stack. We, we want to uh, in continue to invest there. We, and we are doing that. So we are building a, a management dashboard to, to manage in a, in a, let's say, an easier way those thousands of, of boxes connected to our infrastructure. We will uh, improve our usage of reactor. Let's say it's not, it's not complete there. We are hitting the, the maximum number of uh, minion with a single instance of, uh, of uh, salt master. So we will definitely uh, run into uh, multiple uh, or multi-master configuration soon. And we will leverage the possibility of running salt 
or stored command through salt. So, uh, so through uh, uh, Slack. So I'm a huge fan of Slack, uh, all my communication internally. All my uh, cloud monitoring is through Slack. I receive a push notification on Slack whenever something happens on our cloud. Uh, but I want to make um, uh, our uh, application developer, I want to give them the possibility to start new virtual machine through Slack. So simple command on Slack and start a, a virtual machine on testing environment. And also at the same time, the infrastructure team, the DevOps team, to use the same channel to uh, monitor and, uh, and deploy new machine in production as well. So basically, our mantra should continue. So I want to, con to, uh, to have our solution as, as autom automatic as possible. So this brings me to the end of the presentation. Here are my um, references if you want to contact me. Uh, as I said, I live very, very close to here in Zebra. Thank you, thank you. If you have any question, I'm, I, I will be around here during this day, so if you have any question, you can just now collect. Yes. Uh, so you're asking if we had in the past uh, uh, issues where salt service fail. Correct. Uh, so the answer is yes, we had issues like that. So we, <laughs> in, uh, in um, that particular case, uh, if something like that happens, it, it happened more in the past, with previous version of salt that we were using. If something like that happens it, uh, now, so how we can resolve that kind of issue, we, uh, we can uh, remote, I mean, we usually assist the installer of these boxes. So this kind of issues, let me clarify, this kind of issues happen only in the first instance of the box, just, just deployment of new boxes. That was the, let's say 99% of the issue with salt was there. It was anyway, a small amount of them. Uh, so the installer was in place, so he had access to the physical box. So we were helping him to, to get inside the box and resolve the issue from inside the box. But as I said, fortunately it was minimal. Otherwise, <laughs> with, with such number, it, should, it would have been a, a big issue. Yeah. Yeah, we are, we are almost hitting, so, we used to run some of the, uh, just to repeat the question, so you're running, you are asking uh, which limitation we are hitting with the number of minions of the Domus box that we deploy connected to a single instance of the master. So we, were, we used to run a state command without asynchronous, and in that case, most of the time the salt master was going in a timeout, uh, and I'm, I'm referring when we had something like uh, 6,000, connected. Now that we are hitting the, the theoretical number of maximum number of minion connected to a single instance, which is 20,000, we need to switch to the multi uh, salt master instance. Yeah. Not currently. No. no, no, we are only in, in development phase. Almost, yeah, we, are, we have almost 20,000 uh, minion connected there. Uh, you mean the size of the server you know, in AWS? So I, I don't remember exactly which one is, but uh, I can assure you it's not a, a, a huge server. So I know by name all my huge servers. Uh, the server where we manage the connectivity with the minions, so the boxes, is not in that list. As I say, um, most of uh, the, the minion or the Domus box, they execute the high state on their own when they start and when they need to upgrade. It's not something that we push from the center. And that's where we hit the, the limitation on uh, around 4,000, 4, 5,000 uh, minion where we were pushing states from the center. And that's when we switched to using the asynchronous way of pushing states. 
but most of the time it's by it's pooling. So it, it's an execu execution of soft call from the minion point of view. Any other questions? Thank you, thank you very, very much for your time. As I said, I will be around.